Next up, let's take a peek at the Sync 3 media screen. So this is the same screen that we're gonna find in last year's model, so the 2021. Still not on the new Sync 4 system as of yet, but let's at least go through some of the basics. So this is gonna be the typical home screen you're gonna be met with. If for whatever reason you're on one of the other screens, you can just press the home icon along the very top left-hand side. Now this specific one does have factory navigation, so if your Mustang didn't have navigation built in, this button wouldn't be there and the tray would be a little bit shorter. This would be different, so you wouldn't have the map, the audio screen would be there, you'd have a compass along the very top, and then you'd still have the same add phone button. This is the GT Premium, which means that we do have our heated steering wheel, so we can toggle the, wheel, uh, the heated steering wheel on there if we want to, or we can do it through the climate screen along the very bottom. But let's kind of go through all of the basics. Along the very top, we've got our clock, which we can jump in by pressing that button to get to our clock settings. Moving back, we've got our outside temperature. We've also got our data, so what's currently going on for connectivity, currently not connected to Wi-Fi or anything like that. We can toggle our audio on or off on the inside, and we can add a phone by pressing that button there, or we can button press in order to load into our full screen map instead. But starting off with our very bottom tray, so we'll look at our audio tab first series of different options for sources. So we've got our AM, FM, Sirius XM. This thing still has a CD player, which is amazing. We've got our Bluetooth stereo. If you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up there as an option. If you were connected through Bluetooth, that would show up as an option there. So a lot of different options that are available on this screen. We can easily adjust whatever we'd like to from there. So we've got our sources. We can direct tune this way. So if you wanted to toggle in a station that way, you could. We've got our tuning rocker, or we could press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to change out different stations that way if we need to. Now, as you can see there, it did change stations. Here, I'm just going to raise the volume by one. I'll give you actually a quick audio test. All right, so that's just the base audio system. It's a little scratchy there. Actually, let's tune to a more local station and try that again. All right, so literally car shaking, amazingness. This thing does have the B&O sound system. We've got a few different options for stereos and things like that inside of this. Six speaker, nine speaker, 12 speaker, just depending on which trim of the vehicle you're in and which options you've added on. A lot of different options there. And then if we wanted to save a preset, all we're gonna do is just press and hold any of the available spaces. As you can see there, the preset's now saved in. And it can be a little mix of whatever options you'd like there. Now, one thing to point out, and actually while we're on this, we're gonna jump into settings for a second because we can go to our radio in order to make some changes. So we've got our FM radio, we've got our radio text, and then we've got our auto set. And then moving back into our audio again, if we were to go to Sirius XM, tons of options. So we can see there, we can do our direct tune that way. We can list all of our available channels. So we've got our different category views and things like that. Moving back. We've got this little bookmark for notifications so we can edit it out. So if we want notifications when an artist comes on or a specific song, it's going to let us know. And then we can do this in order to be able to adjust parts of the song that we were in on top of that. We've got a series of different options there for our different presets. And the same idea, we can just press and hold in order to save our individual presets there if we want to. Moving back into our AM, FM, whatever the case may be, that changes, oh, actually we forgot one thing. Sources, Sirius XM, settings, Sirius XM button now instead. So a few different options there. So we can set different categories. We can enable disable music. We can do tune to start. We've got our different presets. If we want to lock out certain channels, we can do that. So if you don't want to listen to explicit content or certain things, we've got that option. We can skip channels and then we've got our base information. So when you get a 2022 Mustang, you do have three months of included service there. Uh, yeah, you've got three months of service. So what can happen is if you've already got a SiriusXM subscription, you just call in SiriusXM with your information and then they'll just transfer your subscriptions over instead. And that's gonna be the basics of the audio tab. Moving into our climate. So we do have some climate settings down a little bit there that you can make out, but we've got a series of other options available here. So change it up to our auto mode. Menu lets us go to max AC, air circulation, etc. We can turn the system on or off there or here. We can make this go to our windshield face or feet. We can adjust our fan speed. We can also turn our heated steering wheel on or off as necessary there. And that's gonna be the basis of our climate control directly through this middle screen. Next up is adding in a phone, which is also very straightforward. So what we're gonna do is start off on the iPhone side of things and literally just gonna hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and we're looking for Ford Mustang. 
Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Numbers matched up, so we're pairing. I'm going to hit don't allow for, for contacts. Safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. And I'm connected. 911 assist, I can toggle that one on. One of the benefits there is that if we're in an accident, the vehicle's got to automatically dial 911 for us if we've got that setting turned on and the accident meets certain conditions automatically download our contacts, yes or no, and we just hit finish. From there, the phone itself is connected. So as you can see, we've got my contacts, we've got the phone keypad, we've got our Siri assistant. So if we do a press and hold, so you can see there, we can activate our Siri assistant by pressing the button on the steering wheel. So we just press and hold that button in order to get the Siri assistant going there instead. So a few different options available. If we go back to our audio, look at our sources now. You can see we've got my iPhone that's been connected and then we can also go Live X Live. So Live One, which is a radio app through our phone. A few other apps will work directly through the screen without having to actually connect through a USB, which is definitely a nice thing, but that's gonna be the basics of setting a phone up inside of this thing. As you can see, there are a few other options that are available. Now, we do have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we'll start off on the Apple CarPlay side. I'm just gonna insert that USB cable into that front port. We're gonna take the cable, insert it into the phone. Now let's give it a few seconds there. So Apple CarPlay, we're just gonna hit continue. Privacy turns and conditions, we're gonna approve that. Do we wanna allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we wanna allow that. And we're connected and it's literally that simple. So as you can see, we've got my messages, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. So if your vehicle doesn't have factory navigation, not a big deal because you still have the flexibility to use any of these other map applications instead. We can go back to our main screen there if we want to. And we do have the flexibility to customize this thing a little bit. So on our phone, if we go to general, we can go to CarPlay, and then we select Sync 3, customize. I hope I selected the right one. And then all we do is whatever one we want at the top, we just do a drag and drop. And as you can see there, it's literally letting us adjust as necessary. So we can adjust ones, we can delete certain things as well. So if we're never gonna listen to certain things, it drops it down to the bottom tray. And we can also just do a reset to bring this whole screen back to the factory default layout instead. Moving back to that main screen, I already showed you, we've got Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze. If we wanted to listen to podcasts, we've got the flexibility to do it. We can browse through and look at different, look at our categories there for our podcasts. Same idea with our audiobooks and a few other options. So a ton of flexibility here. Now, if for whatever reason you want to get back to that main sync screen, we just hit the forward button there, and that brings us back to this main screen. Because we're connected through CarPlay, we've got our phone, which will launch us in, Map, which will launch us into CarPlay. We can relaunch into Apple CarPlay if we want to or we can go to our CarPlay preferences. So with CarPlay, we can remove the phone or we can temporarily disable CarPlay. If we do, so as you can see there, I'm still charging up, which is a nice thing, but we're now relying on our factory navigation instead. So we do have quite a little bit of flexibility, but that's how simple it is to be able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this vehicle. Right, and setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So very, very straightforward to do it. So as you can see there, we're currently still connected to my iPhone. So we're going to, if we go into our phone, I want you to see something. So see, as you can see there, we are still connected. We can go to our settings there along the bottom and hit phone to add in a new one. But if we're on this screen, we can hit change phone, which will jump us back into that main setting. So you can see we're connected through my iPhone, but I can easily Search add in another your device. On your device and, select it once it is found. and same idea, we're just waiting for Mustang to show up on the Android device. There we go, so Ford Mustang. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pin numbers match up, which is great. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. So really that simple to be able to connect. And then as you can see there, we've now got another option. Do we want to save it as set it as the favorite phone? So if you've got multiple phones is which one is going to get connection priority? So if both phones are in the vehicle, which one is it going to attempt to connect to first? And then we can download our contacts automatically if we want to, and we're fully connected to our phone. So for the Galaxy now, we've got our Google, our phone assistant, so we can activate Bixby if we want to. So as you can see there, we've got our just regular command. We can do a long press and hold in order to be able to activate our phone assistant instead. So we've got quite a few different options that are available there. And moving back, ah, there we go, phone assistant. So Bixby, I don't have it activated as of right now, unfortunately. But same idea, we've got my contacts, we've got phone keypad, audio, if we move back into our sources, Galaxy S9 is an available option there. So we can literally plug through in order to listen to our Bluetooth audio there instead. But very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto. Very straightforward, we take our USB cable, 
plug it into that front USB port, opposite end of the cable, into our phone. Perfect, there we go. And Android Auto would like to, so all we have to do is hit next there, and we just hit continue on the screen, and we have to agree there. And a few seconds, and three, two. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you know what it is? Oh no, I just noticed this. I've got like some crazy fraying on the bottom of this. Oh no, I wonder if this is gonna work. Oh, let's find out. Let's try this again. Up and in. Perfect. Android Auto, so we are fully connected there. So as you can see, ton of other options. We've got our podcast there. So if we wanted to listen to our audio on our phone, on our Samsung device, or Android device, we've got our music, we've got Notification Center, and then we've also got our Google Assistant. So if you don't want to use the Apple Assistant, or if you don't want to use Bixby, you've got the flexibility of doing it once you're connected through our Android Auto instead. We can click back through to this main screen. We've got our Google Maps, and that's the only option. So unfortunately, on the Sync 3 system, on this, we don't have the option for Waze, because Waze is installed on this phone. We just don't have the flexibility of using it directly through this screen, unfortunately. But we do at least have Google Maps, so if your vehicle doesn't have factory navigation, same idea, we can just use our Google Maps instead. We can press the Ford button there in order to jump back into this main screen. And as you can see, we've got our Android and our Apple CarPlay. We can jump back into Android Auto there. We can go to our main screen in order to go to this one, flip back into our maps instead, and then we can go to some other options. So we've got our route options, guidance, and a few other things there. So very straightforward to use it. And then as you can see there, so just disconnecting from Android Auto. It's literally as simple as pulling out. <laughs> pulling out, that's what she said. All right, it's a few options there. So Android Auto, we're disconnected, so I can now remove the Galaxy and watch this. When I do, gets rid of that button on the tray. Same idea, Apple CarPlay, let's remove that from the tray fully removed as well. So literally that simple to set up Android and iPhone devices to this vehicle. So that'll be the basics of adding a phone into the vehicle. As you can see there, both phones are still technically connected. So if we go change phone along the very top, we've got both phones now, so we can either easily disconnect or we can completely remove it. We're removing it exactly like that, so disconnected. We can reconnect that main phone or we can just remove, remove, and it's now removed. So literally that easy in order to be able to set up an Android and iPhone device in the vehicle. Next up is our factory navigation. So we can easily search this way if we want to. So all we have to do is just start typing in an address or we can search by different options there. So we've got the address for the dealership here. So we just can go Yorkdale. If we want to, we can look through different options. We're gonna go Yorkdale Ford. So let's just click through that. Perfect, we can save that as a favorite or we can just start the drive. Make a U-turn now and then turn right. No, well, don't mind if I do. So a few other options that are available there. So as you can see, we've got a few options for the route. We can disable this as well. So if we don't want to have any sort of guidance prompts, we can do that. We can easily zoom out this way if we want to. We can exit out of the route along the very top, but I won't do that just yet because if we hit this, we can cancel route. We can look at screen views and different settings. We can do a detour if we want to. So it's going to calculate different routes. There you go. So as you can see, we've got a few different options for different route choices. So we can select whichever one we'd like to. Just press, we hit start, and then it's going to readjust as necessary. From there, we move back in. We've got our view route. We've got our search and our history. So if we go cancel route for a second, this is canceling the route out very simply there. And we can go back into our menu again. Traffic list, we've got some advanced navigation settings. So our map preferences, do we want our 3D models, point of interest icons, breadcrumbs to show up? Breadcrumbs is a neat one because on our map, every place that we go, we'll get a little drop letting us know which streets we've taken, which is kind of neat. Moving back into our nav settings, we've got some preferences. Do we want the fastest route? Do we want the shortest route or the most eco-friendly? Do we want to use HOV lanes? Do we want to avoid freeways, toll roads, and a number of other options? Navigation preferences for our prompts. So do we want to have voice and tones, voice or strictly a tone when we've got an upcoming turn? We've got our where am I? So we've got our Latin longitude so we can see exactly where we are. We can search a few different ways. So we can look at our history, our homework addresses. We can search by GPS coordinates and we've got a number of other options. Moving back into, so we've already seen our history there. So we've got a few other options. So places that we've looked at. We've got some options for favorites. So if we've got favorite addresses, so either a home or work address or third addresses. So if we've got multiple ones set up, we can set up a number of different addresses. Then press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and we can say navigate home, navigate to work, navigate to John's or whatever the case may be. So a few different options available. 
we've got our home and work address that we can also set up on that screen. And one of the benefits, is you, as I said earlier, so if you press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, we can just say navigate home or navigate to work if we wanted to go that route instead. But that'll be the basics of the navigation menu and using factory navigation inside of this vehicle. So you can see there back, we've got our main screen and actually just another basic. We can do a pinch to zoom if we want to. We can go minus, we can have it auto go, or we can have different map views this way. So a few different options available. Moving into our app screen along the very bottom, we can add in a device. We will have certain mobile apps, so we will have to have a sync enabled device to do it. We, oh, other one, Sirius XM travel link. So as you can see there, we've got our traffic lists, fuel prices, and a number of other options there. It's essentially like using Waze through this middle screen. So if you have an iPhone, you're pretty much set to go there anyways. Settings, a few other options. So let's go through some basics. We've got some options for sound settings. So we've got some things for treble mid-range bass. Usually the treble down a little bit, bass cranked is normally a good way to be. We've got our balance fade. So if you're the only one in the vehicle, ideally put it there. Reset to really focus and have more of an immersive experience that way instead. Speed compensated volume. So as you're going a little bit faster, it's going to turn the speed of the sound up for us. And then we've got a stereo or a surround mode. And from there, we've got our clock settings. So we can change between hour, we can change hours, minutes, AM, PM, 24 hour mode. We can have it automatically change for, autumn, for daylight savings time, and then we can update it based off of our GPS location. We can press the clock button, as you saw there on the settings, to get to this clock screen, or we can just press the clock along the very top to get there instead. Bluetooth, we can toggle our Bluetooth system off completely if we want to. We can add in phones that way. We already saw our basics for our Sirius XM, and then if we were on anything but Sirius XM, so let's say if we go to our just regular FM, that'll just be a radio button instead. So th same idea, we've got a few different options available. We've got some navigation, which we've already seen these, so our map group and navigation preferences. Mobile apps, certain ones will only work through USB, so we can just toggle this thing on, and then when our phone's connected through USB, it will show different options that are available. A series of different general settings, so we can change our, so our language out, our temperature units, if we want kilometers or miles, the beep that we're getting. If that drives you nuts, you could turn it off if you want to. And then we can reset a few different ways. So our Ford Pass reset, so we that the Ford Pass app would give us the option of remote starting, rolling our windows down, and things like that directly through our cell phone. We can program in remote start times as well, which is great. But if you need to, if for whatever reason this thing's giving you issues, you need to kick somebody off, you can just do a reset there. If you're selling your Mustang, you can just do a master reset to bring everything back to the factory default instead. And from there, we've got 911 Assist, so you definitely want to make sure that one's turned on and definitely make sure that you're connected through Bluetooth, because if you're in an accident, certain conditions are met, it's going to dial 911 for you. Wi-Fi, definitely recommend make sure you connect to a Wi-Fi network at home and turn your automatic updates on, because connected at home with the automatic updates on, if the vehicle senses they're not, there's an update available, automatically going to download it for you, which is a nice thing. Now, one thing to think about with the automatic updates, the files can be pretty long, so it might take a while for the actual system to update for you, but it is available there. Ford Pass Connect, so the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, and that's across the entire Mustang lineup, so we can use it as a hotspot for up to 10 devices, which is definitely a nice thing. We've got our Ford Pass Connect, so the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem in specific trims, but it would give you the flexibility to use the vehicle as a wireless hotspot for a number of devices. We've got some base vehicle settings. So we've got our camera settings as well as our onboard modem serial number. Our rear view camera delay, if we've got the vehicle in reverse and we go to drive forward, it's gonna keep the rear view camera on a little bit longer if you've got that enabled. And then our enhanced parking aid, if we're in reverse, we've got a little kind of car right up along the very top right of the screen. We can disable that if we want to. We've got some options for our display. So as nice as this display is, if you think it's a bit too much, we can turn it off. We can do a button press in order to bring it back to life. We can change up the background for it. So if you'd prefer a different color, different textures, you can kind of see it changing out there for us. And we've got our night mode. So we do actually have three different modes that are available. So we've got our auto, daytime, or our nighttime mode. It's currently technically in the daytime, like it was on the auto setting, but this is the nighttime mode. So it's got that blue look, which I think this thing looks amazing, but it's a matter of preference. Auto is gonna flip us between the daytime or the nighttime, just depending on how bright it is outside. From there, we've got our voice control. So our advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications. So we go to change songs, radio stations, navigate, etc. It's just going to do it without giving us a notification it's doing it. Phone confirmation. Do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then the voice command list is this list. So when we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, that's the list that's going to show up there. 
We've also got our valet mode. So valet mode, all we have to do is enter in a four digit number. And what that's going to do is lock the screen out. So nice hard one, like one, two, three, four. But as you can see there, completely locks it out. So you can't touch anything until you re-enter that four digit number. You do that again and everything's now unlocked. So it's definitely a useful feature. If you're gonna be giving your vehicle for a valet driver or bringing it for service and you don't want people looking through your different options there. So that was kind of neat, right? I do like that we still have wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay at least, and I can't wait oh, until we get the wireless, so the Sync 4 media screen inside of this thing. It's looking like it'll probably be a 2024 upgrade, but it still is nice that it's available there as an option. But if you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop it in, in the comment section below and let me know. More than anything, to talk you through issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up and share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care.